it's January 30th, 2014, and I've got a lot to cover this week. I talk about emails. I don't get uh, a terrible huge amount, but what happens is they kind of pile up on me, especially when I'm busy. I read them all when they first come in, but lack the discipline to answer them right away. To those that have emailed me, don't take it like I'm ignoring you. I will eventually answer. I just get wrapped up in things and I put everything to a side. This week that just passed was particularly bad because I was wrapped up in a project and ignored everything else until I got that done. And that's the way I operate basically. I, you know, bull forwards and I don't, I don't know, some people like to say they multitask. I, to me that's splitting your attention and when I need all my attention to do something, it's going all there. So last week I did the dovetail plug template and I had one email, a guy asked me, well why didn't I just use the one that I already made for the original boxes? And the, the truth is, I don't know, I just didn't occur to me. I could have just traced this right out onto the paper and used this and saved myself a lot of grief. I also got an email from my good buddy Anders in Sweden and he asked me why I keep wearing a Dickies uh, sweatshirt. You can see it in my last video. He asked me if they were sponsoring me. The short answer is no, I'm not sponsored by them. I just happen to have one of those sweatshirts and it's cold here in my workshop so I need something to wear. I don't have a very extensive collection of clothes. I don't like to go clothes shopping so I kind of put it off. Um, that and this one here are the two that look the best so they're my you know my camera clothes my in character clothes for this deal now don't get me wrong I don't have anything against sponsorship I just don't want to get into that I want everything that you see from me to be from me and not from some other company I support this activity from ads on the videos and ads on my website I also have some plans that are for sale on my website and for me that's enough I'm really looking at this time in my life to limit the number of things that I'm doing not add more I posted this on my G plus page as a bit of a close-up picture to ask if anybody could guess what it was and there were quite a few people that that actually did what it is and it's what it looked like I, I think it should look like that from from this angle it's a wooden quick grip clamp. Now this is not something I spent a lot of time on. I just quickly made this. The idea was to try to make an all wood quick grip clamp. It's got wooden springs in both locations, wooden plates and wooden bar. Now it does work. The spring doesn't return it very easily. Like I say, it does work, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't develop enough pressure to actually clamp anything properly. That's because two things are happening. This bar is flexing this way and this plate that grips the bar slips too easily. A fun little experiment to do but not much future in it. It could be improved by replacing the bar, this part right here, with a steel bar like the, the original one has and replacing these plates uh, right here and here this one stops it from opening up after it's clamped tight this one actually clamps it tight replacing those with steel also but that kind of defeats the purpose of the thing so I'm not going to bother um, I figure actual real quick grip clamps for all the you know useful things you can do with them are fairly cheap just buy one I guess last week I said I'd give a little bit more detail and a better look at my drill press cabinet the most frequently asked question about this cabinet is are there plans available for it I started making plans for this cabinet and they should be available before the end of February the cabinet hangs on the wall as you can see it has two drawers in the bottom that hold various bits and what's interesting about these drawers is that they have stops built in so you can't yank them all the way up it also has a shelf right here that I keep my two uh, vices on my metal one and my wooden one 
the wooden one I use more than the metal one. It also has a bit of space for these hold down clamps that will actually hold the vices down to the table uh, that I never use. The front is actually a door that opens up and there's some more storage on the inside. In particular I have a place to keep my drill press table when I'm not using it and that's held up in place with the stock block that goes on the fence. I've also got some cubbies here for storing various things, mostly hole saws and I've got some you know, drum sanders that I never use because I have a spindle sander. But these are handy for these kind of things. I could also put drill indexes if I had some of those. Now the front itself is actually what's known as a slat wall design and everything slides in from the end. Each piece is cut with a little rabbit so that the holders have this piece on the back with a corresponding rabbit that fits right in. If I need to add another one, all I got to do is pull one out, add the tool holder to it, and slide it back in. And then when I got everything neatly arranged, all I need to do is close the door, and everything that I need at my disposal is right here. I thought about making a door for this with a glass panel, but I figured that uh, every time I'd open that up, I'd leave it open, and I'd walk into it, and probably knock it off and break it. So I didn't bother. Anything that actually adds a step to what you're doing is way too inconvenient for me. Right now I have nearly everything that I normally use on here. I need to make another holder for up here to keep counter sinks and I've got a couple of plug cutters here that, you know, they're just laying around. But that's the flexibility of something like this. You can rearrange it easily, move it. If you actually need to make a holder, that's no problem. It's just a piece of wood. As you can see, I labeled each one of these with the size of the drill bit, and I used the toner transfer method for that. I've got a video that describes that in detail, and I'll put a link to that in the description. That toner transfer method uses a lacquer thinner to actually dissolve the toner and put it right onto the wood. Um, it's worth mentioning that Jay Bates has a similar video where he uses a special soldering iron to use heat to transfer it. So this is Thursday once again, and on Saturday I have a new video. This one's not woodworking, but I think it's probably worth your while to watch anyway. It's a pretty good video. It's probably one of my best, no, it probably is my best video so far. And it is on making this knife. I made the knife from an old cold chisel that I had that I don't use anymore. And I actually talked about it in an earlier video where I made the micarta for the handles. Now before I wrap this up, I just wanted to quickly show this. I've, sh I've actually shown this before on another video, but I think it bears repeating, especially now that I have a knife video coming on Saturday morning. I'm going to show how I get a razor's edge on the knife. This is a green buffing compound. I've had people ask me about this before when I made my MDF buffing wheel. And I happened to get this particular one at Lee Valley. What I do is load up the piece of wood. In this case, I'm just using a piece of pine. Any wood will do. In the other video, I used MDF. That works great. Get a good coat of that on there. Then take my knife and actually strop it on the wood. I just do this a few times on both sides. And when you're done, you should have a mirror polished edge. So that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Like I say, there will be plans coming out for the drill press cabinet before the end of February. Uh, I have to say at this time that I will be taking almost the entire month of February to work on plans for the website. It's something that I keep promising people, but I don't deliver on because I simply can't put together a long enough uh, time span to get anything serious done. This may be the last video of this kind for a couple, maybe three weeks. Also, regular videos I'm not sure about. I still have some videos left on my um, other channel. 
and you can look for those over the next couple of weeks. So if you can slice cleanly through paper without it tearing the paper, then you've got a good sharp knife. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, it's kind of hitching. Wow, I just did this. It's making me a fool, man. It's turning me into a... Look at that. Now this is a... Sh I could shave with this. Anyway. <sighs> Let's go. Look at that. Ooh. Now. Now it's cooperating. Now. I think what it is is my paper is a little bit damp. 